There's a lot going on in the world of Magic the Gathering. We have a newly leaked Ultimate Secret Lair, as well as issues regarding Strixhaven booster boxes and Strixhaven foils. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. My friends, we are here today for a big installment of Mega Magic News. Hope you're having a fun weekend because we're gonna have a fun time here talking about some stuff that's going down with Magic the Gathering. So specifically, first item on the list is the ultimate secret layer. Now, if you watched yesterday's video on the leaked secret layer, yesterday we talked about the Strixhaven associated secret layer that had the mystical archive treatments, you'll know that that layer got spoiled through MTGO, which is, if you're only familiar with Magic the Gathering Arena, there's another digital platform to play Magic, and that's Magic the Gathering Online. So, this spoiled secret layer also comes from Magic the Gathering Online. Now, yesterday, I went through all of the cards individually. Today, we're gonna do it in a different style for a couple of different reasons. So, let me go ahead and put up on the screen right now the image of all of the cards from this Ultimate Secret Layer so that we can talk about it. Now, one of the, one of the little audience participation things that you can get engaged in if you want to is take a look at these different artworks and try and determine which plane of existence these all come from, right? Because these appear to be all tuned in to different planes that we've already been to. So if you want a couple of examples, take a look at the Godless Shrine. It's in the top row right there in the middle, right? Take a look at the artwork. You can see that there is a set of broken bolus horns. Now, bolus horns like this showed up on what plane? Amonkhet, that is correct. So the white black land is tuned to Amonkhet. Whereas if you take a look in the bottom right hand corner, you're going to see Watery Grave. Now what's depicted in Watery Grave? A whole bunch, a whole bunch of sunken pirate ships, right? So you know that this one is tuned to the plane of Ixalan. Now those are the two easiest ones, right? I will admit that my old man eyes are having a difficult time picking out all of the details that exist on these different cards. So that's where you guys come in. I want to hear your thoughts on what different planes you think these different shock lands are attuned to. I think it's a really cool concept, honestly. I like the idea of taking, like normally with shock lands, how it works is they exist on Ravnica. The first time we ever got shock lands was on Ravnica. And when we go back to Ravnica, Wizards makes a point of reprinting Shocklands. It's what you can expect every time we had to Ravnica, but it also means you're only ever going to get to see these cards with locations specifically from Ravnica. Now we have a scenario where you, I mean, you, it's not like you can get them all tuned to one particular plane. So if you're a huge fan of one plane, you're not gonna be able to get them all that way. But regardless, I think it's really cool to have this as kind of a scenic viewpoint into a bunch of different planes. So I like it from that perspective. One of the things that's most likely gonna be unlikable about this secret layer is ultimate edition secret layers tend to be pretty expensive. So I expect that the price tag on this secret layer is going to be right up there. I mean, this is your only opportunity to get these lands with these different planar artworks. And on top of that, they're selling you an entire set of these lands. And we're not talking about when they sell basic lands like they did with the Bob Ross secret layer. So you're looking at a scenario where this is most likely going to have a hefty price tag. I don't know exactly what that price tag will be, but I feel pretty comfortable saying that it will be a hefty one. Now, this is a funky, funky set of cards though, admittedly. I really dig this conceptually. So for those people who are able to get it, they'll probably end up enjoying it quite a bit. The sad truth about these Ultimate Edition secret layers, at least up until this point, is that you could only get them through game stores normally. So the amount of them that will be floating around is not going to be like astronomical. It's not a made to order secret layer. Although bear in mind, this is just me speculating now because Wizards of the Coast hasn't made the official announcement about this secret layer yet. So we don't have it set in stone 
exactly what it's going to be. I'm just going off of historically what the ultimate secret layers have been, right? So let's move on. We're going to talk now about Strixhaven news. There's a couple of different points that I want to cover. One is an issue that is coming up with boxes, and it seems to be an extension of the issues that were happening with Time Spire Remastered in terms of whatever sort of algorithm that Wizards is using to program the box printings, or maybe it's just an error on the printer's end. I'm not sure exactly where the problem comes up, but it leads to essentially a collation issue. And so what's going on is there are reports now being made of Strixhaven boxes where people are literally getting fewer uncommons than they're supposed to. However, in place of those commons, they're getting a bunch of additional rares. So I saw a post just today talking about how literally every booster pack they opened had an extra rare in it. And we're not just talking about the extra rare you can theoretically get from the lesson slot in a pack. We're talking about it replacing one of the standardized uncommons you get in each pack. So it is most assuredly a print error. We already saw with Time Spire Remastered that we had people who were getting more rares than they were supposed to, more of the old school bordered, fo not foils, but old school bordered cards, the time shifted cards. There was an increase in those, but we also had reports from people who were getting boxes where they had no time shifted cards. Like this isn't a one person gets a bunch of extra stuff, nobody loses style scenario usually with these printings. It usually turns out that for every box that you get where it's like, hey, all my uncommons have been replaced by rares. Well, those rares have to come from somewhere. So somebody could easily end up getting a booster box where every rare is replaced by an uncommon, which would be a massively feel bad scenario. Now, you can contact Wizards of the Coast. If that happens to you, you can contact your customer service and work out them sending you replacements. But at the end of the day, having to wait that long for your replacements, deal with all that, that's a feel bad scenario. So just bear in mind, there are some issues with Strixhaven in that regard when it comes to the boxes. And the other Strixhaven aspect we have to talk about deals with the foils from Strixhaven, most specifically the etched foils, okay? Because this is the second time in Magic's history that we're getting etched foils. The first time that we got them was in the Commander Legends set. And you're probably familiar if you've ever seen any of these foils, that they stand out immediately, right? They have a very particular effect to them when you look at them. They're very sparkly and glittery. Honestly, it makes me think of glittery nail polish whenever I look at them. So they're pretty intense with their particular glittery foiling, but I think one of the best things about etched foils is Wizards of the Coast figured out how to print foils that are very nice and flat, right? Because in current times specifically, we have a real problem with Magic the Gathering where you have your foils curving, right? Commander Legends was funny in that etch, the etch foils were perfectly flat, but they had tons of regular foils that were just boop, you know what I mean? You're making like McDonald's golden arches out of your Magic cards, which is not a good deal. So etched foils helped to solve that problem, but we're running into a scenario now where people are unhappy with the etched foils from Strixhaven because they're specifically used on the Mystic Archive cards, but it's the way that they're used that is causing a problem. So, with the etch foils from Commander Legends, you would have the entire card foiled, right? With this specific kind of etched crazy sparkly foiling. But, with the Strixhaven etched foils, it's actually only what I consider to be like foil accenting. That's what I'm going to call it. So if you're familiar with the way that the Mystic Archive cards look, you'll know there's the two golden spheres up at the top, and then there's kind of like some winding wire around the text box. So that is the, that's actually the part of the card that has been given the etched foil treatment. So if you are looking for etched foils and you think that they're going to be like Commander Legends foils, you're going to end up sorely disappointed when you see the etched foils that exist in Strixhaven. Now, for me, this comes down to more of an issue of communication on Wizards of the Coast part than an actual like failure in terms of product design. Because for me, at least, and this is a personal taste thing, I really didn't like that the etched foils had that level of shininess. I mean, it's just the glittery nature of it felt like it was too much for me, and it makes the cards a little more difficult to read. 
So finding a way to bring that etched foil flatness and accent the cards for me is a win. Like visually, I like that better as a concept. But the problem is, is that Wizards of the Coast has only done etched foils one time before. And so those set the standard. So there are a number of people who basically pre-ordered a number of collector's boxes under the excited hopes of getting the, the mystical archive cards that would have this etched foil treatment. And they expected it to look like the Commander Legends one. So have that like fully glittery finish. And as a result, they feel like they were misled by not being told actually etched foils this time mean something completely different and only touch a few different parts of the card. And if I'm not mistaken, the etched foils, like it, it, it maybe has a couple of little parts of the artwork too, but not enough to really be discernible. I haven't had the opportunity to evaluate etched foils in person and the video footage that's online that people have available doesn't really do justice to the card. So I'm having a hard time picking out whether some of the artwork gets foiled as well, but it all really boils down to people feeling like they weren't accurately informed to make informed decisions as consumers. And that's a genuinely understandable concern and one that would have been easily fixed if Wizards of the Coast had simply displayed some of these etched foils when making the announcement. This is what the etched foils will look like. And in fact, it may have driven some people to increase their pre-orders simply because they might not have liked the original style of etch foiling, but like the toned down version. So I understand people's complaints when it comes to that sort of scenario. And that, my friends, wraps up all the news that we have for today. Like I said, let me know your thoughts on the different lands from the Shockland Ultimate, which planes you think they represent, because that part is really cool to me. I like nods to different places, right? All the little things that connect together add flavor to magic for me, and I'm a huge flavor boy. So, thanks for coming by, my friends. List of my patrons scrolling on by, and I will see you all for the next video.